Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. And today we're gonna to be doing a quick follow-up video on the air compressor after cooler. All right, so a few months back, uh, I made a video where I put together the sweet after cooler setup uh, on the compressor. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I will put a link to it right here or here or here. I don't know where it goes. I don't know where it goes. It's there, I promise. All right, so a quick overview of what I've done. I came out of the compressor into this cooler. It's got a 12 volt fan on it, uh, which helps with the heat exchange. Then it goes to this moisture separator and it comes out and goes into the tank. Uh, so that's kind of where I got uh, on the last video. Since then, we've upgraded the system quite considerably. So I uh, came out of the compressor with three quarter inch line all the way through. Uh, into this mega flow setup from SST, which is stupid simple tools. If you haven't checked those guys out, check them out. This thing is awesome. So coming in here, it has another moisture separator. Uh, and this is a five micron filter. Then it goes into a 0 0.01 micron filter and then a uh, through a desiccant tube. So coming out of this filter regulator setup is super clean and super dry air. After that, it flows into three quarter inch setup. Um, it's like a plastic PVC that has an inner aluminum lining and then another inner, inner PVC setup. So it can handle, I think like, I don't know, 200 PSI or something like that. I don't know. I'll, if that's wrong, I'll put it up here. How many PSI can it handle? This many. Okay. <laughs> So that goes up, it splits into three different branches. I have one branch going all the way to that corner of the shop, one branch over to this corner of the shop, and then I have one branch that goes to a hose reel in the middle, and that's the one that I use primarily. So I want to measure the difference between the moisture of the air going into the compressor and the moisture of the air coming out of the compressor. So I bought a relative humidity meter and what I'm going to do is just measure the humidity in the air in the shop. I'm going to let the compressor run like full bore for like an hour. I'm just going to zip tie the uh, blow gun open and just let it go. Probably not a good, smart, responsible thing to do, but hey, it's for science. So we got to do it. So once it runs for an hour, I'll shut it down and we'll check the amount of moisture that's caught in the upstream moisture separator. Uh, we'll be able to see the amount of moisture that's actually caught in the second downstream setup after the tank. And uh, I will run the air hose past the relative humidity meter, but I'll put it in like a plastic bag and then run the air through it. So we make sure that we're just measuring the air coming out of the compressor. So I think that's maybe the most scientific method that at least I can do here in the shop in order to get you guys some answers on like how effective is this setup. So hopefully it's effective or it's going to be pretty embarrassing for me. <laughs> maybe this is a video, maybe it's not. Maybe, yeah, maybe I don't post this because I'm ashamed of the results. No, I wouldn't do that to you guys. Uh, if in fact all of this is for nothing, then I think that you guys should know about it. All right, so there's been a couple of questions about how this is set up electrically on the channel, so I wanted to explain that real quick. So here is the power coming into the box. It's kind of hard to see where this spider nest goes. Uh, but anyway, there's a pressure switch in here that operates a set of contacts. So when the tank is below the pressure switch setting, which I think for this one, it's around 120 PSI, the switch shuts, it powers up the motor, and that spins the pump and the pump presses up the compressor. Once the pressure reaches 120 PSI, there's a little sense line in here. It opens the switch and kills everything. So what I did is I wired these two wires in to the load side of this switch so that whenever this motor is running, you can follow this piece of conduit up here, my 220 volt to 12 volt DC uh, power converter gets powered up. So a motor runs, that gets powered up. As soon as that receives power, the output of that is actually wired to this fan. So the fan is only running when the motor is running, which makes sense because there's no reason for it to run when we're not pumping any air through it. All right, so we're about to turn this guy on, but beforehand I wanna get a reading of the temperature and relative humidity of the air in the shop. 
This is the intake to the air compressor. So I'm just gonna take this reading right here at the intake. Let it stabilize a little bit. So right now it's 68 degrees in here and 43.5% relative humidity. So that's our baseline. Hopefully after all this is done, the air coming out of this system is some appreciable value below 45 and a half. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. And that's what you guys are hoping for. So let's see if that's the case. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and let it come up to pressure. Then once it's up to pressure, I'll put my zip tie on the gun and then we'll let it run for an hour and then we'll be back. Air protection. Air protection. All right, so I wanted to draw up a quick, very simple schematic on how the fan is wired up to the switch and everything. <clears throat> uh, just to bring some clarity to the, my earlier discussion where in the switch, it just looks like a, ra a rat's nest. It doesn't make any sense. Or what did I say? I said a spider nest, which is worse than a rat's nest. Why? I don't know, because spiders are terrifying. <laughs> Tell me, which is more scary? <laughs> rats or spiders? Or rat's nest or spider's nest? Yeah. Is there such thing as a spider nest? Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay. Um, yeah, so coming out of your breaker panel, your uh, compressor is probably uh, single phase 220. Um, so I'm not a licensed electrician or anything, but so wire that up like you're supposed to. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this discussion. So then it goes to my wall plug over there. Coming out of the wall plug, the power goes through that pressure switch I was talking about. So this is part of the compressor. So once the pressure switch drops down below the pressure set point, which is 120 for my compressor, this switch will close, connecting the power to the motor. So then the motor spins, runs the compressor, compressor spins up. So on the load side of that switch, I have connected the AC to DC converter. So basically you just come off both phases and that goes to your phase one and two on the AC side of your AC to DC converter. And then you also have your ground, which is all the grounds the same. All the conduit in my shop is grounded together. So that's where I grounded the converter to as actual conduit. Inside the converter, it converts 220 volt AC to 12 volts DC. I'm not gonna get into how that's done, but if you're curious, ask someone. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it's done, I don't feel like explaining it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. Anyway, so there, there are diodes involved and there's filters involved oh, yeah. and okay, and, 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 and full bridge rectifiers and all that stuff. You guys are smart, you can figure this out. Okay, so it converts the 220 volts to AC to 12 volts DC and that just has the two leads going out to the DC fan. And that fan is connected to the heat exchanger. That's how all of, how all of that works. Uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments. Hopefully that brings a little bit of clarity. So, all right, let's go zip tie the blow gun open. And then uh, once we do that, we'll come back in an hour. All right, I, I want to hold this down so it doesn't get all crazy. Here's a almost empty jug of degreaser here. Ha! Ah! Got it. Safety. Safety. Okay. Safety third. <laughs> Safety third. Ear protection. Ear protection. Safety. Ready? Here we go. Let's see when it turns on. So the blow gun is going to outpace the compressor, which is what we want, because I want the compressor just to run constantly for an hour. So at 6.45, I'll see you at 7.45. All right, so the compressor has been running for just over an hour. Uh, so we're ready to do the test and see how much humidity is actually in the air inside of the tank. So um, I wanted to take another humidity reading just in the shop. And it's already come down a little bit, and I think that's because we've been running the AC unit. But right now we're at about 37.4. So let's put this in the bag, 
and fill the bag with the air from the compressor and see how that changes relative humidity. All right, so the humidity meter is in the bag. We're starting out at 38.1%. And now I'm going to purge the air through the compressor. Or now I'm gonna, what am I trying to say? <laughs> All right, so now let's take a measurement on the air inside of the compressor. Here we go. So as you can see, the relative humidity has come down substantially from what it was. And it looks like we've kind of bottomed out at about 16 and a half. Oh, 15 and a half. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that's a pretty good uh, result. Uh, we started out around 40 or whatever percent relative humidity just in the air in here, uh, and the air inside of the compressor after going through a couple of stages of moisture separation well, we got down to 15 or 16 percent so that is a huge improvement let's take the filter bowls off of the uh, moisture separator after the after cooler and see how much moisture is in there and then we can kind of look and see in the second stage here i mean there's just a few drops in there there's not really a whole lot uh going on so let's see what this is Actually, do I have something to pour? Let me get this cup. Well, it's kind of hard to see inside of here, but I'm just going to pour it out into this cup. So, oh. I don't know, maybe a half ounce or so after an hour. But hey, that's a half ounce of liquid water that wouldn't be entrained in the uh, air compressor as uh, water vapor. So, I call it a win. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully I was able to answer some of your questions. Um, like I said before, I think that's a super good result and definitely a case for putting together a system like this on your air compressor at home. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.